What's up guys, Jimmy from MTB Travel Review here and today I'm excited to say it's new bike day. Now, as most of you know, since I started mountain biking three, four years ago, I've, I've been on Santa Cruz since the beginning. I'm a huge fan of Santa Cruz. I love what they do with their bikes. The VP suspension has treated me really well. But as of late, I've really wanted to branch out and try a different suspension format and really just try another bike company. Another goal for me was always to support a local bike brand. Luckily, a very unique opportunity and an awesome bike brand has popped up locally here in New England, actually based out of Rhode Island, and I am stoked to say that I am 100% on board. That said, I would like to introduce you to Dirt Lab. As of today, I will officially be rocking the Dirt Lab Menace moving forward. Now I know a lot of you are going to say you just released a video talking about how awesome the Mega Tower is. And I still think the Mega Tower is an awesome bike. It is a beast, it pedals really well, it was really fun. But again, for me, I needed to try something new. Now I demoed a Dirt Lab a few weeks back and I was hesitant. Is this going to be a good bike? Is it built for me? Is it going to be fast? And is it going to be able to keep up with the beefy riding that I do but also keep me on the podium? at races and luckily when I rode the demo I fell in love almost instantly Now when it comes to the basic geo of the Mega Tower versus the Dirt Lab, there are a lot of similarities. That said, I was on an XL Mega Tower, so I'm going to give you the XL Mega Tower numbers. This is a large Dirt Lab. They don't really have an XL yet. They haven't really needed it because the geo of this and the fit is similar to the Mega Tower. Mega Towers and the Santa Cruz in general tend to run a little smaller, which is why I was on an XL Mega Tower. And again, this is a large Dirt Lab. So. The general numbers when we're talking about reach, the XL Mega Tower was 486 millimeters. This is 496 millimeters. When we're talking head tube angle, this is slightly slacker. So it's about 64.5 degrees, where the Mega Tower was 64.7 degrees. As far as the wheelbase goes, the XL Mega Tower was 1260 millimeters. This is actually 1309 millimeters, so it has a bigger wheelbase to it. And then they both have the 76 degree seat tube angle, which is great for efficient climbing. Now the biggest difference between the two bikes are obviously the suspension setup. Now I did tout how great I love the VPP suspension. It is a very efficient climber. But one thing that I've noticed with using VPP over the years is it does tend to kind of slug into the suspension and it sinks into the suspension, into that VPP. And it really just wasn't giving me the cornering abilities that I was looking for. Now when we look at the Dirt Lab, this is actually an FSR suspension setup. It is a specialized feature similar to the specialized Endurance bikes. Uh, it basically has multiple pivots, one main pivot here on the seat stay. Uh, it has obviously your shock here, a pivot here, one pivot above the bottom bracket, and then another pivot here. So it has a very unique wheel path when utilizing the suspension. Now I'm not a master here, but generally speaking, the FSR suspension setup is supposed to isolate chain and brake loads, making it a very efficient with small bump compliance. It really just has a tighter feel to me. It has a nice pop, and again, when I'm in corners, it doesn't seem to sink as much into the suspension. Obviously, people tout the Specialized Enduro a ton as one of the best bikes out there, so I am stoked to be on the FSR suspension system now. One thing to note on this, this actually has a flip bridge on the bottom, so this bike is very adjustable. What you see here is 170 front, you can do 160 or 170, and then this is 145 rear, and I have an adjustable coil on here. This is a JDEX 
DVO coil. So the flip bridge is actually really cool. First of all, it has a fully integrated chain guide that actually bolts into this flip bridge, but this flip bridge gives you a ton of adaptability. So right now you can do 145, you can flip this high or low to make it a little more progressive or a little less progressive. You can actually do a race flip bridge. So you change this flip bridge to a race flip bridge, which will drop you down even lower and drop that bottom bracket even lower for racing. You'd likely only use that for racing, but you can also adjust the overall suspension of geo of the bike in general. Right now, I believe this bike can do 120, 145, and soon to be 165 rear. So it's very cool that one bike is going to have this, all of this adjustability and all of these tweaks that you can make to really make this bike your own. Of course, if you're adjusting your travel from 120, 145, 165, you will need a different rear shock. But imagine if you could just take a shock, flip it in, instead of having two bikes, now you have a trail bike versus a 165 heavier enduro rig. So it's a very unique system, and it's something that you can play with and tweak, and they're going to keep adapting in time, which I love. Now some other great features on the Dirt Lab, in addition to the integrated chain guide, are some really nice down tube and chain stay protection. It has an integrated rear axle that bolts right into the frame. And then it also has an integrated seat post clamp. So there's all these little features that make this bike really nice. It also just has super clean lines. I love the look of this bike. It's sleek, it's smooth. It really just pops and catches your eye. So it's a beautiful bike to begin with. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna be ripping. Rip it, dude. I'm gonna be like, like that. You ready? Right, I'll be back. <laughs> Now again, I am just so stoked to support a local brand. Dirt Lab is based out of Rhode Island. It is run by Willem Cooper, who is actually the owner of Cyclecraft Fitness as well. Willem has been a pro racer for some time. These bikes have been tried and tested in New England with Willem and his crew for over almost three years now, I believe. So they've put these through the ringer on some New England train, which is super steep chunky tight now in addition to it being an awesome bike and a local brand you know one of the best parts about this is that willem really gives you all of the service you need he helped me build this bike he's helping me set up my suspension if there's any issues you can call willem directly and he's going to help you walk through your problems understand and utilize this bike to its full potential now i've mixed things up a little bit with the dirt lab build so on the dirt lab i actually went with a shimano drivetrain this is an xt drivetrain i of course have my noble tr37 carbon rims that have been absolutely bulletproof these are actually uh, a year old at this point uh, they have a couple dings from rocks of course but i haven't had to true or balance these wheels at all again that new sine wave design that noble came out with is absolutely solid and i love the fact that i don't have to swap my rims every month when they get warped or smashed up so killer wheels on industry nine hydra hubs now one of the reasons why these noble tr37s have lasted so long is because they are laced inside with kush core inserts now i cannot speak highly enough of kush core what it's done for my riding i could not ride without kush core the sidewall stability the ability to just smash through and trust that you're not going to blow a rim up is huge. If you haven't tried Kushcore, I really urge you to. Again, I could not ride without Kushcore. So I'm a huge fan, Kushcore Pro in both wheels, making this wheel setup as good as it gets. I went with the PNW Loam Dropper Post. I have my standard Fox 36 Performance up front. I bumped it from 160 to 170. Uh, love this shock. I'd love to be on the newer 38, but as you guys know, it's really hard to find bike parts, so we take what we can get. Uh, sticking with the standard Renthal bars and stem up front, I got the Fat Bar V2 carbon bars. Uh, I did go with the Inset 2 Chris King headset, that way you can set it and forget it. Chris King headsets are bulletproof. I am sticking with SRAM code brakes. So right now I have code R brakes, love the RSCs, but the R's work for now. Now the newest thing to me is the DVO coil you see in the back here. 
Uh, I've never run DBO before. I've heard good things. They are recommended on the Dirt Lab frame in general. Not that Fox or anything else wouldn't work as well, but I wanted to give a shot. It just have the adjustable spring again, 145 millimeter rear. So I'm excited to see how this coil plays, especially when it comes to racing and pinning on those runs. Now I'm still learning to rip this bike. I've demoed it a couple days and I've now ridden this a couple days. It's a beautiful bike. Again, it's a ton of fun. It corners like a rocket ship and it just fits me really well. I will be doing a long-term review on this bike in time. Of course, I wanna get some miles on it, some race runs, see if I can beat the crap out of it and break it, and then I'll come back and let you guys know what I think long-term. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave them below. If you're interested in learning more about Dirt Lab, check out their website in the link below. I'll put all the information in the description to Dirt Lab, to Cyclecraft Fitness, to everything that Willem works on. As always, Thank you for following along and supporting the channel. If you're a fan, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that little alert button so you know when I'm launching new videos and keep riding guys. You.